Hi, welcome to this new video. I'm Sergio, I'm a computer vision consultant, developer and course instructor. At PySource, we build computer vision solutions to help companies improve their process efficiency, reliability and scalability. If you want to build similar solutions to the one that we will see today, I'm going to leave down below all the contact information so that you can reach out to us. Today we're going to focus on how to get the distance of specific objects from the camera. I'm going to take and use this specific camera, which is the Intel RealSense LiDAR that you can see here, LiDAR L515 is the model. But the same program that we will build today from scratch will work also on the other LiDAR cameras because we're going to use the, uh, the Intel RealSense SDK provided to use this camera so that it will work with our code. In the past, I made already some video about the depth camera in sense this one so you can also find in the channel other videos like this but why the lidar camera and what is the difference from the depth camera there are a few differences in terms of what we will get as information from them and generally speaking the lidar camera is more precise and it will work uh, with a higher range this specific camera will allow us to get the distance from points from a minimum distance of 25 centimeters to 9 meters. And it's very precise. It has millimeters only of margin of errors according to uh, Intel. While this camera, the depth camera, will work for up to a range of 3 meters. And after 3 meters, it will start giving very unreliable, uh, unreliable information. And also the LiDAR camera is less sensitive to weather conditions. So if there is fog, rain and so on, it's less sensitive with the depth camera, you will get again, more unreliable information. So why to choose that camera when LiDAR, ca uh, LiDAR has all these pros in comparison with that? Well, one of the reasons is the price. The LiDAR is more expensive. It's around double the price of the depth camera. Uh, let's now uh, also, before going to the code, there, is, there are also other cameras. There is like the OpenCV AI kit, which works differently. So let me know if you want also to see some videos about the OpenCV AI kit and that information, I can make some video also about that. Now, let's get into the code. How we're going to proceed with the video today? Uh, we will see this in three steps. First, we're going to write some Python code to get the frames from the camera, and we will see how the, we get the distance of each point of the frame using this camera. After we're able to do that, the second step will be object detection, because we need also to understand what object we are detecting so that we can get automatically the distance of that specific object. So first we're going to test, get the depth from the camera. We will detect the object that we are going to connect these two together so that we can get the distance of the specific object. Let's go. I'm now going to write some Python code to do all this process. First to get the frames from the camera and later to detect the object. We'll start writing from scratch, but anyway, we will be importing code that I wrote to make this process much simpler because otherwise it's much longer. Uh, so the, uh, we will be importing some files. First, we'll be importing RealSense camera from RealSense camera. We import RealSense camera. And second, from object detection, we're going to import object detection. These RealSense camera and object detection are two Python files that are in the same folder with this project that will uh, will make this much more simple. All the code that I'm using right now and that will be in this uh, file uh, after we complete this will be available to download with also the installation process. So I'm going to leave down the link below for the blog post related to this where you can find all the information, download the code so that you can also test this with your camera. So let's now go and use the RealSense camera. So we're going to create the camera object. We load camera, RealSense camera. I'm not writing much, as you can see, the copilot is helping me and I'm just assisting this one in the process because 
Copilot already, already knows the code that I've created. And I don't want now to create the object detection object, but I want now to get the frame from the RealSense camera. So we get frame from RealSense camera. Let's see the object. We have color image, depth image, camera dot get frame stream. But let's now show the result. So we want to show color image and that's it. So show color image cv2.im show and copilot knows better than me so we need also to import cv2 so what we are going to do with this it's very simple we're going to import the frames we have two frames the color frame and the depth frame because the integral sense camera is giving us the rgb image and also another frame with the same size which will have the location of the point with its distance so let's now show this one cv 2waitkey 0 so it will keep the image on hold. And let's now run this. Uh, here we have the frame. So this is the frame that we got. Now I have the real, real sense place here in front of me. We got just uh, one frame. What do we want? We want this to be in real time. So we want to keep getting frames in real time. So what we do, we put everything in a while loop, while true. And we want to keep getting the frames. So we do like this. We put everything inside a while loop. So it gets one frame, it shows the frame, it, and then it keeps getting until we press a key. Key equals cv2.wait key one. And then we want to release the camera, um, camera.release, and we want to destroy all the windows of OpenCV. Now let's run this one. No. Okay, when are we getting the frames in real time? Let's now see the depth frame, which is what we are interested in in this specific moment. Now we're getting the, uh, we are showing the color frame, the RGB frame, the BGR frame uh, that we're getting from the LiDAR camera. What we want now is to understand how we can get the distance of, sp of a specific point, because the camera provides also a depth image, which will provide the distance of each single point that we see right here so just to understand this concept better uh, let me show you the other frame which is the depth frame so we're going to close this oh actually we don't have any way to close to quit this because i didn't put a condition so if the key is 27 which is the S key on the keyboard we break the loop now i don't have any way of breaking out of the loop so i need to stop the code Uh, right here, let's show the depth frame, cv2.im show uh, depth, depth image. And let's now run this one again. Uh, this is the depth image and this is the color image. Now, the depth image, normally you see a color map you can display a color map which has like in, it displays in blue the objects that are farther and in red the objects that are very close now i'm, I'm using the row of uh, that image which that's not how you you use it to show but we will only use this to get a specific point from this image what i wanted to show is only that the depth frame is exactly the same so if i want to get the distance of the center point of this image, we're going to get the exact pixel position in the depth image. Let's now show this. So color image, let's say that we want to get the distance, show, we now show a circle in the center of the image, show a circle in the center of RGB image. CV2.circle color image, uh, the center, I mean, this is not the center. So, uh, copilot is good, but sometimes could be better on such things. CX and CY equals uh, 
we are going to get the half of color image mm. get center half of color image let's see if now we get a better suggestion no okay so we get color image we get uh, height with color image dot shape so if we want the center of the width uh, so if we want center x we do width divided by 2 and height divided by 2 for center y so let's do it like this cx and cy radius stripe color let's make this red so bgr the maximum of red minus 1 let's now run this so we're going to do a circle this is very simple we do a circle in the center of the bgr image and we have this a red circle what we want now is also to get the distance of this specific point so to get the distance we get the same position from the depth image now let's get the distance of the center of the image distance camera dot get distance point so from the depth image we are specifying center x and center y to get the distance this is a function i created in the camera real sense camera files all the files are available to download again I made this uh, I, I made it this way to to make it very practical very simple to use but there is some hidden code that uh, is extracting this information but here we have just a simple function get distance point you select the depth image and then you select the point I select center x center y you can select any point to get the distance now let's show also the distance close to the circle so let's show um, we have already some good suggestion to show it so cv2.put text inside the color image we want to show the distance in centimeter so let's now run this one and now let's see the distance of the specific object uh, you will see on the top right of the screen uh, we have the distance 68 uh, centimeter which is now the distance of this specific point from the camera so if I go farther, you will see the point increasing. And if I go closer, let's say with the hand, it will increase. What I noticed is that this camera here has a threshold of 15 centimeters. Before that, at least with this API, doesn't provide any information. So that's the, the starting point is the camera needs to be at a distance minimum of uh, 50 centimeter. Now, that's uh, already a good understanding for how to get the distance of a specific point from using this camera we can choose any point in the screen what we are going to do right now is to get the object uh, detect the object so that we can also get the distance from a specific object let's do that so let's close this and let's add object detection inside the code so for object detection we use the file object detection uh, dot pi. Also, this file is uh, ready to download down below the description. This is a simplified file I created. This is only a smaller version of the one I created for the course. I have a course object detection with OpenCV and Deep Learning where I teach how to uh, create object detector to detect and interact any object. So this is a, a course which explains this in a very simple way with a lot of source code that will help you build projects from scratch. So if you want to know more about the course also that link down below in the description now let's create object detection to detect the object so we load object detection and what do we do we so this is the object detector which integrates yolo to detect objects in real time uh, we get the frame from the real sense camera now once we get the frame from the real sense camera i want for a moment to uh, put a comment I don't want now to get a specific distance from a specific point let's for a moment focus on object detection we need to get object detection uh, we have bounding boxes uh, we have bounding boxes classes and score equals object detection dot detect color image uh, so what we're doing right now we are getting the color image from the real sense camera 
and now we're passing this image to the object detection object detection is giving us the bounding box so it's detecting objects and giving us the bounding box of where these objects are located and also what these objects are let me now show you this we loop through that here we have all the code already written uh, by the copilot but let's now simplify that now let's just show rectangles for each um, object so let's now run the code and let's see how this is working and first of all what this is detecting we will also talk quickly about that on what we are detecting with this uh, specific object detection model now it looks very rough and very very basic this one uh, also something is off with the location i see no so copilot is good but not always will give you the right uh the right thing so uh, object detection will return as the x, x1, y, the x2, and y2, which is the bounding box. So let me quickly show you this. When we, um, when we build an object, when we detect object with object detection, Uh, we need to draw the object on OpenCV. We get the X1 and Y1, which is the top point, top left point, and then we get X2 and Y2. So we use this with OpenCV. We put this, uh, I mean, like, and let me uh, follow them because so we have the top point where this, okay, I got it. So we get the bounding box. We have the bounding box, we need this point. And this point x1 y1 x2 and y2 and we get that using these two points we then draw the rectangle so with the rectangle on the color image we need the first point x and y and then x2 y2 x2 uh, y2 and then we give the color in this case green color vgr 0 to 50 0 and then thickness 2 let's now run this one and let's see what we get okay now it's working definitely better in this case we are getting for what i see a person the face uh, we're getting the plant that's on the back and sometimes we're getting the desk this object detection is using the pre-trained model from open images data set that can detect up to 600 classes we will not get into object detection because that's not the core uh, of this topic let's just make this better let's also make a distinction between the objects so if we're getting an object which is the person let's show what it is and then also let's change the color for what we are showing so that's much more intuitive and simple to follow so cv2 dot rectangle color image huh? let's show also the name so display name and now first let me get the color color equals uh, let's give a color depending on the class. So we, here we have class ID, not class name. Class uh, IDs, class ID. And color we get from object detection uh, dot get. I need to check the file. Uh, I don't remember now the function. Okay, class of these. Uh, so color uh, from object detection, we have colors, and we take a different color for each different class ID. Let's also display the name. So we get the class name from object detection dot classes class ID. We have the list class name. We have the list of uh, and in object detection dot classes. We have six hundred names because that's what we can get six hundred objects with this specific model. And then we want also to show uh, the name. Okay, we have the name, and now see if to put text uh, class name. We don't want now the score. Let's focus on class name, and that should be it. Color. Let's give the color. 
and here also we give the color and that's it pretty much let's now run this one oh okay now we have we are detecting the objects you see also uh, we have clothing we have the plant uh, human face this is object detection in action. Now we need to integrate object detection with the information that we get from the RealSense camera. And later, at the end of the video, we will discuss about what are the challenges of this project, what you can do to improve it, um, and so on. So now we're going to see this very rough uh, explanation and code, but uh, later at the end, uh, stay tuned because we will discuss about anything that you can do uh, with all this information and what you need for uh, to do properly this specific project. How can we do that? Uh, the concept is very simple. We get in real time from the frame the position of all the objects detected. Uh, we get the human face, we get in this case shirt, man, uh, house plant, and that's all we get. For the bounding boxes we have the x1, x2 of each object, uh, I mean x1, y1, x2, y2 of each object. So of the human face, of the shirt, of the houseplant, and of man. Okay, we don't see, it. okay, here we see the y2, also x2, y2, and of the shirt. Here is the second point. Now, to get the distance of the object, one simple approach will be to get the center of the object. So, of shirt, we get center X, center Y of the bounding box will be somewhere here. Center X, uh, center Y. Human face, let's say that we get this center point, the house plant, this will be the center point, center X and center Y. We apply this information on the depth frame so that in real time we will get the distance of each specific object. Of course, there will be some flaws with this approach and later we will discuss also on all the improvements can, that can be done with this. But let's first see what results we're going to get from this. And it's very uh, simple now to do this uh, uh, as we reach this point because what we need to do right now after we have the bounding box of the object uh, we have the rectangle text we need the center point of the object so get center of the bounding box cx cy is the median point of x and x2 and y and y2 and on this we can get the distance of the camera the copilot is already suggesting us the next step so camera get distance point from the depth image, we get center X and center Y of each single object because we are in the loop. So we are looping through the object and each single object will display uh, the center point. Distance, let's now show the circle. So we're going to draw, draw circle on center X and center Y. And also let's put the text with the distance and Copilot is also showing this because it's very similar to what we did already. So Copilot is suggesting us already the code that we did before by showing the point of the, the central point of the image when we were explaining how to get the distance of a specific point. Uh, X, Y, X2, Y2. Let's now run this one. Uh, there is some okay there is some problem with displaying the distance I want to display the distance uh, where we have the dot and where display the distance below the bounding box so let's now change that of course copilot had an idea but I had a different idea so we have X and Y but we want center X and center Y center X and center Y plus 20 yeah, let's keep it like that and let's run this again. 
So we're getting the point of the center of the object, we're getting the distance of the center point. And so you see the distance of the shirt is 70 centimeter, distance of the face is 69, so if I get closer, 54, 53. Let's see if we get the distance of the plant, house plant distance, oh, I can't see it, but it's around two meters or something. I mean, we can see because it's out of, it's writing outside of the bounding box. Okay, it's around 230 centimeter, 235. Okay, now we have this very basic approach to get the distance of each single object. And now, of course, you can use this one. In some cases, this can be useful. But let's now see a more advanced scenario and let's also uh, understand on how you can work depending on the complexity of the scenario. So I'm going to move the camera and find uh, some other position uh, where we'll focus on other objects. Uh, now, I'm running this on a more complex scenario where I, and I'm filtering only uh, for the tripod. So that's why we have only the tripod detected and not other objects, so to simplify this. Especially if you're working on an industrial environment and you need to get the specific distance of the object, first you need to understand what distance you need. Because now we're getting the center point, but the object, depending on the angle you get the object from, might have different distances because the, like the, the distance. So let's take this scenario into consideration. So I take this screen. This distance of the tripod right here, it's smaller than this distance right here because the tripod is like, it's like a pyramid. And not only the distance, so here we have the tripod, we have all the bounding box, the distance that we have here, which is the same distance that we're detecting the center point, it's not even on the tripod because we're getting the center point and the center point is the wall behind the object because the object there, uh, it's empty. So uh, there is space, so we're getting, the, the result that you see right here is the distance of the wall, not the distance of the object. If we want the distance of the object, we need to get the object. And of course, in this case, it gets, the project gets more complex. In this case, the object detection getting the center point won't be enough anymore, but we will need to get the segmentation of the object, so the exact segmentation of the object. So instead of using object detection, we will need to use the segmentation of the object, so we will have the exact coordinate of the tripod right here. And like this. So once we have the, se uh, the segmentation of the object, we can use a similar approach. Uh, we can get, uh, we cannot get a specific point because it wouldn't make sense. It, we cannot get the center if the center is not, um, is not of the object. But we could get, for example, in this area, in this segmentation, we could have the maximum and the minimum distances of the, of the object max and minimum. And depending on the scenario of the environment where you are, you might need uh, any of this information. But also there is a more complexity that needs to be discussed because uh, the camera, the LiDAR camera and the depth cameras, they are not perfect when giving the information. So when you get the distance of specific points, especially if the, there are some hidden points where the laser and the projection of the, uh, the infrared depth camera can't arrive, you don't get any information of that. So when we get the map, uh, the depth map from the camera, it's usually, you get the distance for most of the point, but there are areas where you have no information at all. So in such cases, there might be some values that are not reachable by the camera, so you will get zero because you have no distance about that. So in that case, it needs 
uh, either the, you can use some specific filter to remove that or you can get the average uh, average distances and remove uh, the completely wrong values and so on. So I want just to warn you that you can get a basic uh, test of uh, this type of projects uh, with this code that we've right here, but then each scenario must be investigated and studied depending on the requirements that you need. I want also to show you something else that might arise when working on this, because as I said, the cameras are not precise. So let me show you what we get for all of this. I want now to remove the tripod. So let me remove the filter by classes. And let's run this again. So again, uh, saying that the, the camera is not precise, especially with some objects like the black objects, which do not reflect uh, you often you don't get information. So you see we have the laptop and for this specific point we have this distance zero zero. So there are problems where the camera uh, is very unreliable and needs to be taken into account. Can this problem be solved? Yes, also with this object can be solved uh, in industrial environments by having multiple cameras, a more complex setup by having a stable camera. So each scenario must be studied. And of course, there is a solution for almost every problem, but it's not straightforward uh, and information that you get from the camera uh, that easily. So I hope that uh, everything that we uh, saw today was very useful for you, for you. You will find the code that I wrote right here down below in the description. If you want to know more about this project, if you want to build such project for your company, you can contact us at pysource.com. You will see the info to contact us for this and other type of industrial software like this. If you are a beginner and you want to learn, uh, a beginner or even if you are a programmer but you, are not, you have not experience with computer vision and you want to learn more about computer vision, I recorded a full course about object detection with OpenCV and Deep Learning that will work you through all the steps to detect and track any object. There are a lot of source code, custom source code, very easy to implement. I made very easy implementations and it's bought by developers, researchers, company to build projects. All the links down below in the description. This is all for this video. If you want similar videos, remember to like and subscribe to the channel because I'm going to bring many more videos like this. This is all for this video. See you in the next one.